Well, you won't be needing these at all for this tutorial. Hi there, gorgeous. Hope you're having a great day. Today's video is another one of those where I try out something brand new I've never tried before. And this request came from one of our lovely friends here. Let me see if I can pull up her comment. I believe it was Judith. Is that right? Yes. Judith Car Catlett, sorry asked me in a video very recently, she left a comment and said she came across this video from Smitha Deepak and it was about finger blending and she wanted to see if I could try this method and what I thought about it. So I looked up this video and it was absolutely awesome. I had not seen anybody do this before, but it makes so much sense. So before I show, before I try this technique, I wanted to show you the video in case you hadn't seen it yet so you can see the kind of technique that she uses. I'm going to be using the Jaclyn Hill Volume 2 palette by Morphe. I'm going to start with the lightest shade in the inner corner and as I move to the outer corner, I'll make it deeper. That's just my preference. You can use any eyeshadows that you prefer. I'm going to start with Aminit in the innermost corner. Right next to it, I'm going to be using Rhydo Diamonds. And then Talia in the center of the lid. Followed by Flawed and Odd. And then Empowered in the very outer corner. I clean my finger every time I dipped into a new eyeshadow just to get the maximum pigment payoff and I applied it with my dry finger. All I'm going to do now is with my index finger, I'm going to rub my lid gently. Don't be afraid that the colors will mix because that's the whole point. The colors have to mix and give you that seamless blend. And you'll be surprised how beautifully the colors blend, giving that ombre effect from the lightest shade in the inner corner to the deepest shade in the outer corner. Everything seamlessly blended. You can see how stunning that looks. And let me close my eye and you can see my lid. It's so beautifully and so seamlessly blended awesome right makes you want to try it like right now so pull out an eyeshadow palette and let's try this together i am going to be using a very old favorite and that is the maybelline soda pop palette because i feel like there are some really beautiful shimmers in this palette that could recreate the kind of look that she created i have already gone ahead and applied my eyeshadow primer i will go ahead and zoom you in a little bit more although i may really zoom you in in post because i'm not in far enough for you to see what i'm really doing here so yeah she used about four five i can't remember off the top of my head that however many it was four or five different eyeshadows on the lid so i'm going to choose to go with about that many the first shade that i'm going to take from this palette is the one called tonic and so i'll take this no 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 never mind never mind never mind i'm gonna take my pinky because my pinky is the smallest finger i have <laughs> that's the wrong eyeshadow let's try this again okay this one and i'm going to apply it onto the inner corner hopefully then i'll take the shade called soda fizz which is this one right here and i'll apply that right next to it like so i'll take the one called cherry cola at the bottom here and i'll apply that next to it oh <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to swipe it on, but okay, like that. And then last, I will take the shade called Grape Pop right there. I always seem to turn on the camera when the lawnmowers arrive. I don't know what that is. Murphy's Law. I'm going to apply that shade on the outer corner. And we'll swipe it on like that. Now, that's a really interesting color combination. Then I'm gonna wipe my finger off here. And she just took that one finger and blended it all together. So. Huh. Okay. Well, it is really pretty and it does work. And it doesn't even look like I applied four different colors. It looks at most to be about maybe two because it's blended together that well. And the other thing that she did too, 
is took a shade and applied it into the crease and then blended that some more. So I'm going to take the shade called Cherry on top here, that one, and I'm going to attempt, oh, we'll see how this goes, to apply this in the crease with just my finger. <laughs> well, yeah. And then blend, we'll just blend it out. Yeah, well, that probably didn't work out so well. <laughs> I'm not sure that I like that part. I am going to go back with the shade called Ginger Ale at the top of the palette, though, because I still have some veininess showing through, and I'm going to use that to blend the brow bone a little bit more. And maybe that'll help to diffuse some of that really deep purple I applied in the crease. Now, I really like this. I, I like this. This is a cool technique. Now, can I create it on this eye? <laughs> well, I don't know. Therein lies the dilemma, right? You get one eye to look perfect, and then the other eye just like, you. what happened? <laughs> this is just... <laughs> See, but it's good. It's good to try new things, right, and experiment. And not be afraid to make mistakes because goodness, did I make a mistake over here or what? <laughs> and see, this is the weird thing. It's always this eye that looks better than this eye. And I have a feeling it has to do with just the right hand on the left eye with brushes. It always looks a lot better on this side than it does on this side. But in this instance, <laughs> it looks better on this side than it does on this side. And I, I struggled a lot more to do it on this side as opposed to this side, probably because I am right-handed. Now, if you have hooded eyes, this may be a little bit of a struggle because obviously you'd have to bring it up a little bit higher. So if you have hooded eyes and you wanted to try this kind of technique, what I would suggest is instead of applying it only on the lid, you'd want to apply it up in the crease. So as you're applying those eyeshadows, just drop one right there, drop one up here, and then bring it up into the crease a little bit and do the same thing with this one and this one on the outer corners. Bring those up into the crease and then blend them and then blend them up. That way when your eyes are open, you can see the transition of colors and it is a really beautiful effect. Now this is a little bit too red for me personally today, so I'm going to take it off because I want to do a little bit of a different combination with it, but I am going to do the same technique again. Well, it's still reddish leaning orange, but you know what? It's okay. I tried a little bit of a different technique with it the second time as opposed to just containing it to the lid like I did the first time. I carried it up like I had mentioned for hooded eyes and I like it a lot more like that as opposed to adding the crease color in afterwards like Smitha had done. And it's gonna be up to your own eye shape as to how whether or not you like this technique Anyway, but if you had hooded eyes, then this is the way to go. But I'm really liking that combo. And if you're wondering about the eyeshadows I used, I took Tonic, applied that to the inner third. I used the one called Sugar High on the middle of the lid. And then I took Crushing on the outer third. And that's what I blended all together there. And you'll notice too, when I did the tutorial with it, that I placed the eyeshadow in the shape that I wanted it to go. So for me, I like to have a little bit of lift on the outer corner. And so I placed it more into a V like shape. And I, it's funny, I wanted to mention this. If you have struggled with doing your outer V, it's actually really easy to do it with your finger. So if you take your ring finger and you just tap it along that part of the eye and deposit the eye eyeshadow in like a v-shaped pattern it's really really easy so i wanted to mention that if you struggled with that when it comes to a brush your finger might give you a better result than what you may have experienced 
worth trying. I went ahead and put the full face on because I feel like this is one of those looks that you really can't judge until everything is completed. Have you ever done that before where you put your makeup on at least the eyeshadow part and you think, oh, I don't know if I really like that. But then once you get it all on, then you're like, oh, okay, I like that. <laughs> That's what happened here. And I love the eyes. Now that I have the lashes and the liner and all that put together, it looks absolutely beautiful. And it looks like I used brushes, but I promise you I didn't do any touch-ups with brushes. This was only using my finger, my fingers only to create this look. So just goes to show you, you don't need to invest in a lot of brushes and you can still get really beautiful results. And this is a great tutorial, I feel like, for beginners and even those who are advanced in makeup too and the results are just stunning either way. So if you have not checked out Smitha Deepak's video, I will ha have that one linked for you below. I will also have her full channel linked for you below. Very informative, educational channel here on YouTube. Excellent in terms of makeup, makeup advice, and I know that you would really enjoy it, so please do check it out. Let me know if you try this technique, or if you have tried it, what you think about it. I just, I can't recommend it enough to you. And I truly hope that you found this helpful today. If there is another technique or another video that you see floating around that you would like to see me try, feel free to recommend it below. I know I've had a lot of requests lately for the reverse cat eye look, cat eye liner, cat eye, I don't know. It's a reverse look that's supposed to be for hooded eyes. So that may be the one that I try next. So yeah, but let me know. Thank you for being here, for taking the time to watch. And I look forward to seeing you again next time.